Andrew Razor Raycroft of Nesson and WEEI. Razor, good morning. How are you, friend? Good morning, gentlemen. Perfect. Nice sunny day out. Ooh, is it? Finally. Is it really? I don't yeah. know. I feel I like know. last night we got more snow than the than the storm of the century that happened, like, what, on Monday or Tuesday? Oh, my God. But, what a disaster. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm. Hey, listen, oh, I was I was shoveling. Anybody wants to come down to Seekonk, everybody bitching about this. All right, I got any snow. Come on down. Do you have plenty oh, for everybody? I got pleased with the amount of snow to move around. Razor would be like, yeah, I did this in 10 minutes when I was a kid. Well, I'm curious. <laughs> hey, wait, has, the weather has been – didn't you say you did an outdoor rink? Yep. Okay, so how did, did it, I, how did you get any ice time? Yeah, yeah. So we had some we had some good days, and then this weekend, like I, it should be ready to go tonight. Like it's actually in a good spot. I, I was really concerned we were going to get the ten inches of snow, and that would have been that would have absolutely destroyed it. But the fact we didn't get any snow has actually given outdoor rink hope uh, for this weekend because it's going to be cold, and and the kids are excited to get on it. So, so in a good on, spot. I flooded it this morning. So on average. When are you normally breaking down the rink? Is this like a mid-March type deal, or is it just very year by year, and you just kind of call it on the fly? Yeah, it's more on the fly. So, like the if it like this block of ice will take a little while to melt. Like it's got to get it's got to get pretty warm. But typically, end of March, like once the grass gets growing, because um, that's the other thing, right? Like the tarp protects the grass, so you usually you take the tarp up and um, it starts growing like a golf course, right? So. There's there's some extra benefits to it, um, but not not an ideal day. Not my best afternoon when I have to take the whole thing down and send water going everywhere. But um, yeah, usually end of March, probably within okay. the month. So in Canada, is it flipped? Is it rink season like eight or nine months out of the year, and grass season <laughs> three months out of the year? Oh. <laughs> It used to be certainly. It, it's it. We have a pretty like where I am. Um, it's a pretty similar weather pattern to here. Uh, maybe an extra week or two of winter on either side. Uh, but but sure, growing up as kids, I mean, you didn't have to build rinks because there was just ponds and water in the fields and and wherever else. So you, you, the dads and that and the fact that dads back then didn't build. Rinks like they go go outside, kids. Figure it out. Yeah, so, um, yeah. A, little, yeah. a little bit different that that's, way that's too. That's the Fourier way. <laughs> oh, I feel like that's all yeah. of our. That's the way we all kind of grew up. So I also yeah, we're so, like, so so that's the good times, right? That's those are the good times. I feel like these are the dark days of the Bruins, Razor. Oh, they just yeah. can't. Since that All Star break, they just can't get their skating legs <laughs> underneath them. What's going on? Should we be worried? I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, they should have scored like nine goals last night. They missed five open nets, three posts. I mean, it just wouldn't go in for them. I thought they played pretty well until the second goal went in and they just felt they deflated them a little. I thought they were good against Tampa. So, no, I they've been at home for a long time. Um, I think they, they'll, they'll benefit getting out on the road and, and playing some road games and changing that mindset up. But I'm not worried right now. They're they're still in a really good spot. Um, we do have deadline coming too, so I want to. I'm interested if if there's going to be moves and and how that works. But it's it's tough to get going, and, and when you're not scoring goals and missing empty netters, it's it's even more frustrating to play the game right now. I know that you like uh, Fourier, who is a part of the uh, Tight End Association of America. You are a part of the Goalie Association of North America because we must include Canada and Mexico can get jumped in there. However, uh, does Don Sweeney need to consider trading Linus Olmark and that salary for someone who can come in and be able to help this hockey team? Uh, no, I and one just because I think you need two goalies. It's part of the identity, the identity of this team. But the other, the other major thing is like there's a lot of teams that need goalies, and there's a lot of teams that have goalies. Like there's a pretty good balance, and there's a few other guys that are available, but nobody values your goalie as much as you value your goalie. So there's so much talk like oh, just trade a goalie and we'll get a first line center. It doesn't work like that. Um, uh, you're not getting back nearly what anybody thinks mid-season when you're trading for a goaltender. So that's that's the big uh, misconception, I think, a little bit when we hear, oh, just trade Linus and, and get your top six forward or get your top three defensemen. You're not going to – I don't think that's the market. I don't think that's what you're getting back 
for one of these goaltenders. So at the end of the day, Linus is all, or Store Jeremy are always going to provide more value to you for the next two months as, as the Boston Bruins than what any other team is going to perceive that their value is. So um, before my question, I just had a suggestion. I, I, f- I feel like I have yeah. a name change for you. It's Andrew okay. Razor Raycroft, right? I feel yeah. like you should go by Andrew the Razor Raycroft. I just think about that for a while. What's he a prize fighter? Well, I feel like in a way, no, it isn't it isn't it more menacing? Like here comes the razor and then and out comes Razor and his little, you know, 170 pound guy, right? I mean it's Oh my that is no? hop along Cassidy over here firing away and Razor being svelte. I just not like man, here comes the Razor. Now let's go to ringside to talk to the Razor. No. Now, yeah, here's Al Bernstein with the Razor. <laughs> just think about it. Uh, just a suggestion. Okay. I, 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 okay. I so here's my here's my here's my question. My god. What's more concerning <laughs> as of late? Okay, <laughs> you know you like it. What's uh, more concerning? I, as I'd a, love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I knew he would love it. Jaffe's too down the middle. Yeah, you, you're going off the <laughs> yeah. exit ramp. Um, all right, serious hockey talk question. Oh lord, with our buddy Andrew the Razor Raycroft. More concerning at this point in time. Okay, uh, the power play zero and two last night. I think they were zero and six against Tampa or the PK. Which which one is uh which special teams is more concerning? PK for me. Um, I, 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 again, Marshawn missed an open net on the power play. Van Reams like literally missed the open net from the top of the crease last night on the other power play. Could have easily have been two for two. Uh, they, they will get it sorted. Um, it, and and power plays just typically go zero for twenty a couple times a year. It, ju- it just kind of happens um, for whatever reason. The PK hasn't been very good since December fifteenth. And at the time, Forbert was out, so you would, and, and they were winning games. So you, you had kind of a reason or an excuse. And instead, now you're giving up 14 power play goals in 14 games. And they've taken too many pow- penalties, so we'll start there. They've taken way too many penalties. But last night, they didn't take too many penalties, and they still gave up a power play goal. And it was off the rush, and it seemed a little unstructured. So, so my concern is the PK, because if that starts going, that typically is a little bit harder to get back on the rails, and it's a little bit harder to get confidence, or it takes a little bit longer to get confidence back on the PK. So I want to see that cleaned up. And, and really, that's like that concerns me more than the losses, than the old shootout loss, than playing well and not getting a win, or the power play. It's the PK right now. I, I really want to see it get turned around. Uh, Andrew Razor Raycroft with Gresh and Fourier here. Say it, the, say it my way. He's with us on the Harbor One hotline. Just say I, it. I, I can't. He likes it that way. <laughs> I, no, you're, again, here we're on the Fourier telling people what they're what they like and what they. Uh, all right, so the Razor is with us. It just doesn't sound. <laughs> you're right. not doing it right. No, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> razor, uh, Brandon Carlo wiped out, created a uh, odd man <laughs> rush. I mean, it was. What was, uh, first of all, do you just kind of chuckle at those? Like, I know Carlo after the game was like, yeah, I guess I better go see my daughter and get some skating lessons. Like, is that one of those, hey, it happens in hockey. What are you going to do? Unfortunately, it gave up a goal. And on top of that, what was your most embarrassing skating moment in an arena full of people? Okay, perfect. I have a good one for that. (laughs) And yeah, you 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 do basically laugh it off at the time. Of course, you're embarrassed, and it you know you're annoyed, uh, especially last night because it always seems to happen when you guys should be winning, and and that's the reason why you end up going down uh, two to one. But but yeah, it's it, it happens, and not a big deal. It's not like you're gonna go and like work on that play, or it, it just happens. Um, guys fall down. Ice is slippery. I had uh, so one of my the one I remember and it's etched in my brain. I'll never forget it. And I got really so we were in Binghamton. Bingo! I don't know if anyone's if you guys have been. To oh Binghamton, my god! Literally, yes, the worst place in the world. Like it is. <laughs> Wait, hold on, horrible. Razor, Razor, hold on, Razor. This is great. My daughter actually plays basketball for Binghamton <laughs> University. And so yeah. He, and yeah, so I get it, right? You're like, oh, this is interesting. Keep going. Oh, it's great. Bingo, something else. So, 
we're in bingo and and it's kind of that's like my parents hadn't i hadn't seen my dad and my mom and dad for a while so my dad came down with my uncle so i was like oh i, I want to play good with them in the building and the whole thing um first period and the i don't want to throw the, the trainers work so hard right but somehow this train the trainer we had in providence at the time he like screwed my skates up and i knew it was screwed up and i tried to fix it but it turned out that it wasn't fixed well enough. So I go out to, it was like a, a, a breakaway and I could have went out and got it, but I had to hit the brakes. Like, yeah, I wasn't going to get to it. So I hit the brakes and as I hit the brakes, a full yard sale, like the legs go up over my head, <laughs> my no edges. I'm literally swimming at, at the hash marks, literally swimming. The guy comes in on a breakaway on his own, goes around me, puts the puck in the net and I'm heated. Like I am at, I'm I'm so mad and I'm worked up because my dad and my uncle are in the building. It's Binghamton, so I'm already annoyed. <laughs> I, you know, I was in the NHL like two weeks earlier, and now I'm in Binghamton. Like I'm just angry. Like I have that angry day, and I start screaming at the bench, like yeah, about my skates. Like I, because I'm so embarrassed and I'm so mad at myself, and I'm so. And then I go in the room and I throw my skate across the room, like put a huge hissy fit as like a, a pro athlete. Really embarrassing. Uh, we did end up winning the game. I remember we came back because I was so embarrassed. I'm like, I can't lose this game now. Like, I have to do as everything I can. I give the trainer a hug after the game. But but still now, I can picture all of that night when you ask me what's embarrassing. That's the first thing I go to. Wow. I didn't think you had that in you. Oh, yeah, very rarely. Like, very, very rarely. But this, And that's why I remember it so well, I think, because, uh, again, I, I do feel bad when I do stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I lost it for sure that okay. night. Well, listen, that's fine. We all we all have those moments in us, and you know they're yeah. few and far between. I'm sure, but now you're a grown adult. You got your ice rink outside. Like you're you're like a great dad. I mean, this is good stuff. You've evolved. How about this? No, I'm, one? I'm evolving. Yeah. How about yeah. this one? So earlier in the show, we 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 led with you know talking about the Bruins, and, you know, and the loss, and I think it was uh, Mark from Bedford who uh, called up and said... Mark that this, and Medford. Medford. Okay, I had half of it right. Half he, of it right. This, this guy half got surgery right. on his ankle razor and can't speak. Oh, Wait, oh, I spoke. I, I said we, it. Can we leave room for two questions for me for four oh, two, by the way? Oh, Okay, yeah. all right. Last one for me. Last one for me, then it's you. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, perfect time for this team to take a road trip. Yeah. For sure. I, and... I, I, I'm not a big, like, guys want to be at home. Guys don't like going on planes and traveling and staying in hotels. But I, it does get to a point where these long, long homestands, there's just too much going on, too much at home. You get too lulled into forgetting about hockey, I think, at times a little bit. So, no, they're going to Western Canada, and then they got Seattle. So they got four and six coming up starting Thursday. Um, and, and that will get them on the road, and then by the time they get to Edmonton, they'll be ready to come home again. So they'll get it out of their system real quick. All right. Okay. All right, so we actually have a text compliment that came into Razor. I'm going to save that because these Fourier questions are burning. Oh, okay. Razor, these are just ahead. for me. Well, All right. Yeah, yeah. One is how is Binghamton for the students? Like, does, does your daughter have a good time there, or – uh, and are people like, is it fun? And do you go there often? I, Where do you eat and stay when no, you no, go there? I have not been there often. I've been there a couple times, but it's it's a hall. And uh, but no, she it's a she says it's a party school because there is absolutely yeah. nothing there. So there's a lot of that going on, right? And it's a and okay. it's a. Uh, like it's not like a freeway campus or a backpack campus where you know kids leave over the weekend. They all stay. Got it. And then this ankle. I need to, like, a little bit more store. And how miserable are you at home for your wife? Because I can imagine that you have a lot of energy. And the fact that you can't go anywhere or move. Horrible. And you're literally <laughs> probably asking her to do stuff yeah. for you all day long. No, yeah, I mean, you. Razor, you know, you know me now. Yeah, that is – you don't know my wife, but that is – it could not be more true. I think she's ready to move out. I I had her drive me to work yesterday, uh, and I thought she was gonna I literally open the door and just kick me out because I it, and then, so Gress drove me today. Yeah, Razor. He rode up with he rode up with me today, and when Kim dropped him off, it was akin to divorced parents doing the handoff for the weekend. 
it that's felt actually, like it that's felt funny. like that's, it felt yeah. like I was like the dad is being like, all right, yeah. you've got oh. him for the weekend. Yeah. Here. Get his backpack. That, He's got practice tomorrow. He, he says backpack down on the ground. His little wheelie cart. We loaded them all up, and then like literally, he the doors weren't closed, and his wife drove yeah. off. Yeah, it's, it's amazing because I was thinking that yesterday when I heard that she drove you in. I'm like, there's no chance she's driving him in again tomorrow. No. Like, there's no way. He's going to have to Uber. He has no. no chance. No, and then she wouldn't come pick me up. So I had to, <laughs> to I had to take an Uber. I had to take an Uber to her job because she refused to come into come into the city. Oh, yeah. yeah, I listen. God bless her. I got another week of this and. I'll buy her a nice little, uh, I don't know, maybe buy her some roses or something. What should I do? I got pizza. She likes pizza. That's what I do. Well, no, you should, you need to, you need to get her a hotel room so she can go stay by herself for a night. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going with her. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that'd be great. (laughs) Hey, I'm here. Hey, uh, can I get the, uh, can I get the room with the, uh, with the accessible shower? (laughs) The handicap shower. Throw your big ass in there and just hose you down. Well, let's end on a uh, a compliment to Razor. This just came in from a texter in the 781. Said, guys, I'm listening now, and I hear you have, he called you Mr. Raycroft. Wow. Uh, And I just wanted to thank him. My son's been a goalie now for eight years, started as a U6 player. We met Andrew at Monkey Sports one day. He told my son to always worry about the next session, not the last goal. And he's continued that, become a very good goalie. He'll probably play varsity as a freshman. We have that written right above his bed. He looks at it before every game. So, again, thank you, Andrew, for inspiring my son. Wow. wow. Look at this guy. Making my day. Making my day. Wow. Thank you for that text. That Stay is right really day. a good chat as always, Razor. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. Hopefully we see you soon. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, you too. Good luck, Mrs. Fourier. <laughs> Good Hell, good, good luck me. I'm driving him Greg's home. Greg's going to drive me home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if she don't show up, then what am I going to do? I can't leave him in the That's middle true. of a Dunkin' good Donuts luck, parking Greg. lot, you know? Good luck, Greg. Yeah, good, good luck, luck to me. All right, Razor, uh, thanks, buddy. We'll see you. There goes the Andrew Razor Raycroft with us on the uh, Harbor One hotline. He's got the, he's got the, he's, he got the like the most distinctive laugh you've ever seen. Oh, very much so. Like the, the, it's like, and the, I want it to be my ringtone. Really? Yeah.